So what we're scanning and looking for is something about the size of a bark chip because they usually aren't moving when you're driving. They're usually the toads are just sitting on the road. But it's really not dark enough yet. So this lake is bare and it drains into this wetland that then drains into fish. In the main area where the breeding and all of the tadpoles develop is, is in Fish Lake. If I shake up the water, uh, it's, it's these little black things. You can see them swimming a bit. You just have to look and then you, all of a sudden you'll see them swimming. And it's, they're, they're thick. And see, they're all through here on this side of the, that log. So we're here at Fish Lake and the reason that we started this project uh, five years ago now, we started with a pilot project, was because for many years we would come up here and see toads smushed all over the highway, like thick, black, uh, sort of greasy. And there would be motorcyclists that would come down to New Denver and they'd be talking about being up here on the highway and just sliding out on grease. And so in looking at how many baby toads were killed every year, we started to look at this whole area as a population of toads and how important it was. And then we started to see how many breeding pairs were here. This area is really important in terms of the baby toads because what they really want to do is cross back around the highway and go up to uh, up into the mountains where they go to hibernate. So the interesting thing about the whole dynamic here with this lake and the highway and all of that forest upland is that the adults cross twice. They come over once to breed. Sometime in May, early June, we're still seeing some coming uh, down to the lake now. And then after they breed, some of them go back up. And then we have the baby toads who are crossing the highway. So in a year, we have three different migrations happening. And although this highway looks pretty peaceful now and there aren't too many cars, um, it, it really picks up in the summer, especially uh, during the weekends, the long weekends. And so our concern over time has been when there's, you know, a couple hundred cars coming through here, what does that mean for the toad population? Yeah, oh yeah. So floating, but they were like actually hanging on like the bottoms of sticks and all of the grass. And look at a lot of breeding pairs through here and a lot of egg masses. To drive. A different trail. So what we have is a, a map like this, and we're following these uh, KS points. And so now we're about here between uh, KS 9 and 10. So we've got one male. We need to import it. Uh, 486. 3647. Okay. And the waypoint number? 518. 2150. Our main research is to point out where on the highway we're seeing hot spots for crossing, where are the toads mostly preferring to cross. And so we do a night survey, which is when the adult toads move is during the night. They usually start around now when it starts when it's getting dusk. And we're seeing where are they crossing. 
And when we then map all of that, we take GPS locations, we've seen that this area is important, where that cove area is there on the highway, down a bit is another um, important area, and at the far end of the, the lake, the west end of the lake. Another nail should be that we're heading south. Is it one nail? Yeah. Okay. Four eight six. Yeah. Five six nine. Yeah. Five five four. the males do oh, the squawking time sure. sound and also you can see there right there on his that finger there's like a dark patch they're a bit sticky and grippy and that's how they hold on to the females when they're mating let's see see that how dark those pads a little bit like sandpaper yeah there you go bud okay Female? Okay. Yeah. So the females will blow it up a little bit more and then see how they've got, you know, uh, if we call them thumbs. And no chirping. <laughs> it's a really different quality when you pick them up. The females sort of just go limp and they bloat a little bit. We have talked to the Ministry of Transportation, we've had field tours, we've brought people out here to talk about what our data is showing in terms of where toads are preferring to cross and um, also where they're, where they're most uh, being killed because we also are tracking mortality. During our night surveys, if there's vehicles, we sometimes end up with mortality, but also we do morning mortality counts to see overnight who, uh, who's, been, who's been hit. In many ways, it seems obvious, but the, where more of the toads are crossing, you'll find more mortality. So our hotspots line up, and they line up in three places. And so we're just, we're waiting actually for funding to come through the Ministry of Transportation, where we can really start to talk about creating toad tunnels for when they resurface and replace the culverts here. That's really our best opportunity for looking at how to um, and where to put toad tunnels so we can send the toads under um, underpasses rather than over the road. Yeah. There's a lot of goose poop here too. Between mm -hmm. the goose poop and the bark, keeps us busy. Was that two summers ago they were doing the bare face logging? But of course every night or every day they were doing it a load it seemed like. So there was always a renewal of bark. Mm -hmm, yeah. Kept us kept us going. The Ministry of Transportation, because this is not a high priority highway, they know that there's work that needs to be done here, but when they evaluate their budget in the spring and they've had landslides and they've had road you know, washouts and they've had various things that have, have gone on that they need to respond to, um, I think this project starts to fall down the list. This has been flagged, it's just a matter of when they get to it. So meanwhile, we just continue to document what the toads are doing and learn about more of what the toads are doing. But consistently, it seems like these three areas are ones where the adults and the toadlets would benefit by having underpasses.